Hi there booktube, it's Eleanor here and today I'm going to do some reviews of some books that I've been reading. I told you in my last uh, book haul that I have been reading books, I just haven't got round to filming videos recently. I've been taking part in the Tome Infinity and uh, to Tome Infinity and Beyond readathon which is a science fiction readathon um, prompting you really to read science fiction books and it has really prompted me to pick up uh, in particular a trilogy which I've had on my shelves for a long time um, highly recommended from a number of people especially Jen from today in Jen's library um, or now sorry her, her channel is now Jen talks audiobooks uh, sorry Jen and I finally picked it up and I'm really pleased I did before I get into that, I want to go through another book that I picked up for the readathon, which unfortunately was a little bit of a disappointment. I had this book on my shelf for a while. It's called No Ordinary Star by M.C. Frank, and this is the first book in a trilogy. Set in 2025, humans don't eat or um, sleep anymore. They take these tablets, which keeps them going. They live pretty eternal lives. Uh, they keep going. There's things to do if they get ill. Um, um, they have special technology. Technology is advanced enough that they can take these tablets and it stops them um, from dying or certainly elongates their lifespan. But for some reason there is a man in this who reminded me of Santa Claus who lives in the North Pole in this log cabin and builds the New Year's Eve clock um, every year. He builds a new clock that counts down to what I think is their sort of version of New Year's Eve and celebrations. And he doesn't seem to take these tablets and there seems to be sort of rebels and splinter groups that don't take these tablets and live the old way of life, which is as we see life today. And for some reason they are locked up and it was very confusing. Because it was short and it's the start of a trilogy, I was expecting some quite strong character and world building in this one. I wasn't necessarily expecting a massive explosive plot, but I was certainly expecting by the end of the book to understand the world, to understand um, the characters and the characters' motivations, and perhaps being led up to some sort of climax that would then lead us on to the next book. But I just didn't feel like that happened with this. The world and the characters felt flat. I didn't feel like I understood any of the characters' motivations for the things that they did. I really didn't understand what we were aiming for, what we were getting at. I didn't really understand much about this world and what was going on. And yeah, quite frankly, I just felt a bit confused and a bit bored. Um, I was definitely not feeling the motivation to pick this up. And it's an incredibly short book. It's only about 150 pages. I really should have been able to whiz through this, but I just felt like it was a chore and I didn't want to pick it up. So I ended up giving this one two stars and I'm definitely not continuing on with this trilogy. Next up is the trilogy that I was talking about that I've picked up and I have now read all three. And that is the Cricket Trilogy by Amy A. Bartle. It starts with Under Different Stars. It then moves on to uh, Sea of Stars. And then the third volume is Darken the Stars. I really like the covers of these. I really like how they look together. They're really nicely done. I believe they might be self-published um, and I think they're very well uh, published, very well designed. It's a very cohesive trilogy in terms of its look. Our main character in this cricket is hiding from the foster care system. She is 17, she's about to be 18, which means that she will be legally an adult and be free of the foster care system forever. She's hiding under the radar, she's working cash in hand jobs to make money so that when she is 18 she wants to go to college, she wants to start a proper life. She's had a terrible experience of foster care, she doesn't really know who, much about her real family at all. Um, all she's really known and remembers is this uh, foster care system system which has treated her harshly. Um, she hasn't been well, well cared for. She's flitted around from home to home but she's now seeing this sort of um, end in sight. It's so close she can taste it. And then all of a sudden, which is the start of our story, she is followed by someone. She's thinking maybe it's the foster care system that's caught up with her. It turns out it's not. And she is kidnapped by a group of soldiers from another world. She's taken by these soldiers to um, another planet, another world, which they claim is her original birth world, where she was born. Um, and she starts to discover about her, her family 
family, her parents, her history, and about this world that she's been taken to. She learns about the world and its warring factions and her role to play in this. She learns about the magic that is um, in some of the uh, people from this world, uh, namely priestesses uh, who have these magical abilities and she learns about those. This is a real high octane, fast paced, fast moving story but even though it's moving, there's plenty of action, there is never, um, in my opinion, a lacking in plot and world building. We get that as well and it, it's a really unique and interesting world and I really loved finding out about it and finding out Cricket's role in it. We have some really complex characters, both ones that we love to hate, also ones that we believe are all good, and then we realise that they can be flawed, everyone can be flawed. One of my biggest bugbears in reading books is when we have um, a character, maybe a love interest or a hero, who is just perfect. And then we have our, um, you know, evil baddie character who is evil and there is no in between there's no gray and i think that's not real to life and sometimes it's fun to read like this but i really loved how all of the characters in this all had their flaws all had um, their good and hard parts and were all looking out for their own interests which is just human nature it's natural and i thought it just made sense the character's motivations our main character cricket is a brave young woman she's standing up for herself she's independent she's feisty um and i just just really loved her character. One thing that I can see um, that has caused quite a lot of controversy um, is the ending of this trilogy. There's been a lot of controversy about it. I'm obviously not going to tell you what the ending is because it would be a mahusive spoiler, but um, I didn't find that I had an issue with it. Do I want more? Yes. Do I feel like I need to know what has happened more? Yes. But I can see the author's motivations of how, what, how they have led, left this and, and the, where all these characters are at the end of this story. And I think it makes sense. It makes sense. It may not be what we want, but it makes sense. And yes, I would love to know more. But that is because I'd love to be back in this world. I enjoyed it so much. I would love to read more books um, set around Cricket and this world. Um, but as a trilogy, I think it worked really well. And um, it didn't appeal to my um, senses of um, needing a super duper tied up, wrapped up, happy ending. But it worked for this and I really enjoyed it. And I gave all the books in this trilogy four stars, a strong four stars, and I'm so pleased that I finally picked them up. And then the final book I want to talk to you about today is one I read before I started um, this readathon. So it isn't a science fiction book. It is called Clean by Juno Dawson. I really love the cover of this. Uh, it's very shiny. Um, I was um, in two minds about picking this up. I have tried some of Juno's previous books and have not enjoyed them at all. In fact, I've DNF'd a couple. Um, and so I went into with you know, low expectations if I'm honest. Um, however, I had heard a lot of people on booktube who I respect and feel like I have similar tastes saying how much that they had loved this book. So I thought I would just dive in and give it a go. And I'm really pleased that I did. So this story is about Lexi. She is a socialite. She is constantly on Twitter and Instagram. She is a lady about town. And at the very first pages of this, she's being forcefully entered into a rehab facility by her twin brother. And we follow her progress um, in this rehab facility where she has gone for drug addiction. We follow her detoxing. We follow her story through the different stages of rehab and then ultimately um, through uh, the end of her stay at the facility. Now, I want to caveat my review of this with the fact that I'm not an addict. I have no experience of working or being around um, people with addiction. I don't have anybody in my life who has an addiction. So when I talk about my feelings on this book, it is purely my thoughts and feelings coming from a place on a complete outside. I have no experience of whether this is a reality, this is realistic, 
music or how everything is portrayed all I can talk about is from how I enjoyed this book and what I thought about the story. I thought that the writing in this was catchy and evocative I didn't want to put it down I felt Lexi's emotions along with her um, sometimes I didn't like her sometimes I was angry at her sometimes um, I felt for her and I I, I I teared up a little bit for her I felt a, a bit of a roller coaster emotions uh, with Lexi she wasn't a wholly likeable character but I felt that made her even more well-rounded at rehab Lexi is forced into um, a cohabiting meeting a variety of different side characters and here we have a plethora uh, of diversity and representation we've got fat representation we've got a character of color we've got a transgender character we've got characters dealing with self-harm alcoholism sex addiction drug addiction um there is lots of things covered in here and I thought they were handled in my opinion very well. One thing that really shifted this for me from a three star to a four star read was the realities of life after rehab. I think too often we are shown this picture that uh, you go to rehab, you get fixed um, and then you go and that your life is rosy and on the up from then on out um, and as we can see from current um, media you know we see Demi Lovato, she had a slip up, she's back in rehab. We've seen Ben Affleck. We've seen people constantly going back into rehab for addictions. It's not something that ever goes away. It's something that people constantly struggle and have to deal with on a daily basis. And there are slip ups, there are relapses. And it doesn't make you less of a person. What is uh, what it is about is how you pick yourself up after that and, and how you carry on. And it is, a, I, I'm sure, a constant struggle for people that are struggling with addiction. And I feel like that was something this book didn't gloss over. It didn't, you know, try and make us believe that um, life after rehab is all roses and, you know, wonderfulness. It, it showed us those hard sides and the constant struggles and battles and the slip ups. And I really enjoyed that. I thought, well, not enjoyed because it's never nice to see a character, whether they're fictional or not, going through something um, you know so difficult but I really liked and I thought it was very refreshing the way that that was handled. So this is one Juno Dawson book that I would definitely recommend and I ended up giving this one four stars. So that's some books that I've read recently. I'm currently reading some more that I'm really excited to tell you about and I will come back to you soon with some more reviews of uh, uh, various different books from various different genres as always. Uh, I seem to be on a bit of a flit at the moment through various different genres but that is it for now and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Bye for now booktube!